So now let's talk about the top 16 swimsuit and evening gown turns of the candidates. To be honest guys, watching both rounds, we could really feel who would eventually make it to top 5. Ako, ganun ang pakiramdam ko. It was so easy for me to narrow down the list from the 16 candidates who walked down the stage just, ba just by basing it all from their performances. And I concur with you all that at the top 16 straight to the top 5 format was really brutal. Yes, we got to see all of the contestants, the top 16 candidates, both in their swim and evening gown, but the cut was so harsh that I wish there was a top 10 announcement for it. And this is what I would love for Miss Universe Organization to explore the possibility in its future editions. Have a top 10 parent and do getting to know interviews with the contestants for this round, similar to how they did it back in the 90s. Because for me, there was just too much time allotted for the top 16 announcement and I would love for MUO to really think about it, to save airtime, to save more airtime during, during the top 16 an announcement as it took three commercial gaps for that segment to be finished. If I would have it my way, reveal the top 16 girls in one call right away and do the top 10 interviews after the top 16 round. In a way, so in this way, we get to know the girls in a better light without having to see them get nervous answering the nerve-wracking top 5 Q&A in the next round. So what do you think, guys? Diba? So at least the cut won't be that brutal and you, you would give more airtime to the contestants. So diba? More airtime, more happy contestants, right? So before we get to the top 5 announcement, may I just say that I am adoring the video package they did for Ukraine, Poland as they talk about the hardships that they went through going to Miss Universe this year. I thought it gave the show a more humane and relatable feel to let us see that even though the pageant is a glitz and glam event, they are still aware with the current events and highlighting their candidacies here makes us realize that this pageant really cares and speaking of cares let's talk about the impact wavy social impact slash transformational leadership award miss universe organization has started giving out this special award to one delegate who has been proactive in spreading positive awareness for the causes and advocacies she cares about and the inspiration that she creates at the same time and for this year miss thailand won this special award based on the number of fan votes that she garnered given her backstory and numerous advocacies that she has spearheaded throughout her reign every year the miss universe organization has never forgotten to give a solo spot or segment for it in the finals night and i just wonder why this special award has never been included in the selection of the top 16 finalists. And given that P. Ann is very vocal about the transformational leadership quality that she looks for in a winner, I wonder why this Impact Way V award has never been considered for merit or for the selection of top 16. How is it that countries like Thailand this year, Chile last year, and even Bolivia two years ago won so much respect and admiration from her peers in promoting her causes but not significantly gaining the prelims judges approval come closed door interviews. Diba? I just find it odd that these three contestants or candidates failed to articulate their causes in the closed door interview yet wins this special award. Because if you ask me, this special award is like Miss Universe's version of Miss World's Beauty with a Purpose Award. And so it would be nice if the recipient of this special award will be one of the semi-finalists on stage just for the remarkable work that she has done for her community. And especially now that the organization seems to be partial to a candidate's strong and genuine advocacy, it makes for a valid suggestion for future reference. So what do you think, guys? So going back to the top 16, like I have said, you can predict from the get-go who would advance even if you haven't seen them perform. And have you noticed how there is less emphasis on the girls' walk or even the level of sexiness these girls were showing on stage? Whereas before, there was too much close-up shots on the candidates' booty, hips, as they do their runway walk, na pansin nyo? Lalo na nung 
pre-Trump, nung Trump era. Now, for the past two years, the camera shots have been focusing more on the candidate's face and whole body to showcase their pasarela skills. But even those facial shots had to compete against the individually designed capes of the contestants who, for the first time, had the creative opportunity to design it for the first time in the pageant's history. So just like last year, I feel the contestants were judged in this round the moment their name got called on stage and walked towards the middle of the stage. And so if you will ask me, do, do I like how they are doing the swim showcase now? Yes, because you can see MUO is really trying to strike a balance in showcasing a girl's athletic athleticism or fitness level and responsibility to her community with her advocacy perfectly captured creatively in her cape. And the first 20 seconds of their performances, nakita niyo naman, in my humble opinion, were the basis of how the judges did it for this round. So it was important for these contestants to establish power and strong stage presence the moment they got called on stage. So this explains why the moment I saw Puerto Rico walk the stage to open the swimsuit and evening gown segment of the competition, I knew she would easily make it to the next round. Why? Because she really had strong stage presence. And kita niyo naman, and that hair flip at the start was really a strong indication of her soaring confidence that she would nail this round. And this is what I also have to say about her evening gown performance. Now, she was also strong even if she did not make a gown switch for this round, right? And I just love how she stuck to this silver gown with beaded fringe as I feel this was the perfect look and gown for her. And she listened. Diba ito yung commentary ko sa kanya nung nag-live chat ako sa inyo last time? It was really her stage presence that did the talking for her all throughout. Right? So ito yung best example talaga na huwag mo nang baguhin kung tama naman na pala sa'yo. And then Haiti came next. Wow, she's tall and she has a fit body but I wish she... She could have given more power with her walk as I feel her walk here was more for the evening gown competition. And same with her evening gown turn, although I love her gold evening gown with cutouts, but somehow the outfit wore her instead. Or the other way around. So, however, however, I am just so happy for this country to make it again to the semis after their almost win here in Manila six years ago. Then we go to Australia's Monique Riley. Out of all the surprise candidates who made it to top 16, she really impressed me the most as she was the as she was so confident with her walk, with her tone, body, and charm. She for me she did everything right here. And even with her evening gown performance, I am glad that she ditched the train of her silver disco ball gown for a more impactful look. If there was a top 10, sasabihin ko sa inyo, I really feel she would have been a shoe-in. And then, th then there's Dominican Republic who came next. Even though she was just side-posing at the start, you could already feel her strong stage presence, especially when she finally started walking. That walk, I must say, was so flawless and superb as of observed by Catriona herself too. And she kept the crowd to her feet the moment she came out in her silver beaded gown which I totally like for some reason. Yeah, san ayoko na kasi ng mga silver gowns. She was one of the few girls who also got called in dress rehearsals and so what is amazing in all these instances is that she has strong stage presence. The, the gown that she wore during the show just looks so beautiful on her as, as if she was really floating in the air. So wow, I'm just incredibly happy for this contestant as she finally was able to compete after getting COVID last year. And then Laos was next. You know, to be honest, the moment she came out, I wasn't really impressed with her catwalk, especially the moment where she paused in the middle where I thought she would do something explosive, like a spin which I feel was quite a dud <laughs> as I did not feel its impact in her performance. And when it came to her evening gown performance, she looked so elegant in it as she walked towards the center of the stage. But I don't know, guys, but I, I'm sure you felt it too. But I kind of felt her nervousness, especially when the camera had a close-up shot of her as she posed in the middle. So I wish she enjoyed her moment there. But regardless of how I feel, I am just incredibly proud of her for making it far and defying her family's expectation to become a Miss Universe contestant. Now, as early as now, she is already a winner 
from the get-go. And as the lone Southeast Asian candidate to make it to the cut in Miss Universe this year, I was more than happy that she represented majority of us in the lineup. So, grabe, I'm just incredibly happy for our neighboring neighboring country to finally get their first ever placement in Miss Universe. And now we go to Miss South Africa and Davi Nokari. Oh gosh, what a natural performance she gave here. The moment the camera panned on her face, she can feel so much of her power and enthusiasm in rocking her swim. And I just like how she was just natural and confident with her walk, aided by her natural big hair, which I feel made her a huge standout in the competition. And then when it came to her evening gown naman, wow, she managed to make me so excited in this very high cut glittery red gown with a lot of embellishments and you can see that she is having her moment here. Then Portugal's Thelma Madeira was next and she gave a very decent performance as she worked her cape while walking. I just forgot how beautiful this candidate is. She held her own here in my opinion. Lumaban. However, I feel she looked dated in her white beaded fringe gown with that kind of hairstyle and look. And I wish she could have chosen a gown that would have made her look more current. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Then, then Canada's Amelia too was next, who showcased a glimpse of her ballerina skills with that numerous twirls in the middle of her performance. Of course, we all lap it up, but I feel it was still not too strong to overtake the six heavy favorites going for the title. However, I'm glad that she made her mark in this segment of the competition because I genuinely, you can really feel her genuineness here. And I also like how she looks so stunning in her feathered cape gown. But I felt she kind of played dressed up in this moment and did not do enough justice to own her gown. But again, that's just, that's just my opinion. Then there's Peru's Alessia Rovegno. And wow, Vava Voom, what an incredible model she is. She is such a supreme blonde beauty, aided with her strong stage presence and, uh, as well. And I'm glad that she just exuded the right amount of confidence and walk, but I wish she could have smiled more. And when it came to her evening gown performance, I thought she looked better in red during prelims as this sparkling white gown was not the knockout gown I would have wanted for her. As for me, it was too safe and decent. I wish she did not change at the last minute. And now we go to Trinidad and Tobago, another pleasant surprise in the competition. Her short hair already made her a standout and I just love that she also exuded the right amount of energy and sexiness in this segment of the competition. And am I the only one who is feeling her in this gold lame gown, especially after hearing the fan facts of how she arrived at this decision to wear this gown? But yeah, I have to agree, the color kind of washed her out on stage, but you can never fault her confidence level here. And then there's Curacao's Gabriela Santos who came next, and she proved her stellar presence again with this walk. Those facial transitions were solid and spot on in getting her to the next round. And to be honest, she was just so effortless, and the camera just loved her a lot here. Now, now, the same cannot be said when she showed up in her silver evening gown. I thought she had a better look during the preliminary competition. This silver gown for me was just too safe in my opinion and I wish it took this opportunity to stand out more. However, with that lovely face, it was totally enough for her to get through to the next round. And then there was Devita Rai from India who looked every inch a stunner in her own right with her pasarela here. She was so serene and beguiling with her turn here with that overflowing confidence in achieving for that back-to-back -back win. I think she really had done enough to continue her country's winning streak. And when it came to her evening gown performance, I think she did okay. I wasn't a fan of her evening gown choice from the collar down to the cut of her gown, but I love Devita, Devita so much. I just really love her. That I wish she could have pulled out all stops in choosing a better gown. I wonder what the other option she had as what Catriona had revealed during the telecast. Then there's Venezuela's Amanda Dumamil. And it was an interesting choice for her to wear a one-piece in my outfit. In my opinion, as I feel she could really rock a two-piece, given how confident and powerful she was every moment on stage. You can see that she was definitely having fun on stage, as aided by the loud cheers 
of her fellow kababayans and excitement continued as she showed up in a go in a gown with gold and blue patterns. I super love the intricate details of it sa totoo lang, especially in the Buddhist area. It stood out in its own right and she carried it really, really well. And same with USA's Arboni Nola, who looked every incredibly sensational with her fit body and walk here in this segment of the competition. What I love about her swimsuit turn here is that she had everything personalized from her head from, from head to toe. She dyed her cape. That was conceptualized the accessories of her cape, given her background as a fashion designer. That was incorporated her father's advice to her to her cape as well as she displayed her level of fitness with that commanding walk. And so the crowd really went out for her. And now when it came to her evening gown performance, all the more she blew me away. For me, she really outdid herself again in this black Rian Fernandez sexy cutout gown. And you can tell that she really loves to give us fear, drama, fierceness in every performance. Now, she was so fierce and powerful as she walked on that stage. And have you noticed how she and her designer incorporated those gunmetal accents and blue sapphire stones on the shoulder pads of her dress? Upon close-up to match the blue force for good crown, I thought that's A for effort for doing her homework. Yeah, right? Then, uh, then next we go to Spain, Alicia Fobel. I have to admit, I underestimated her power in this pageant. She just defied my expectations, especially in terms of catwalk. So, mia culpa, Alicia. Her walk was such a huge improvement from her Miss Universe Spain pageant as I just as I just realized now. Her walk as I would compare to her previous stint was so laudable as she presented her pasarela with so much class and poise. In a sea of fierce Latinas, right? Thanks to her Filipino trainer Ian Lawrence. And the thing with her performance here is that I realize now is that it is a strategy in itself that she is a European who is demonstrating the type of candidate that Miss Universe is looking for in a winner. My class, elegant, refined, with her confidence and advocacy fueling her desire to succeed. So I get now why she chose a beige Leia Almodal gown for her turn here to showcase her transformation to an elegant queen from her persona as an international model. Right? So Alicia is really teaching me here na hindi kailangan palaging baklain ang performance just to get notice. Sometimes it's in the innate qualities of a woman which makes her powerful. And then finally we go to Maria Frey Aristizabal from Colombia who also nailed this round. She, for me, she was such a knockout beauty in showcasing herself during the swimsuit round with this flawless watch. And she was also very luminous in with her emerald evening gown. But the whole cut for me was the same cut and silhouette that we had seen from the previous Miss Universe Colombia delegates. I just feel, and I also feel she just had the misfortune of going after Arbuni all the time who came out with a show sto show-stopping gown beforehand that her gown, in my opinion, Colombia's gown, was too safe for a, was too safe to follow it up. So gets new. And so when the top five was announced, I was not completely shocked. I mean, who could really beat USA, Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Curacao, Dominican Republic in this lineup? I mean, if South Africa and Colombia managed to steal one of the spots from the top, from the actual top five, I wouldn't mind also because that's how strong those seven were. And so I was really excited for them to answer their top five Q&As because they are all incredible public speakers. So it was just a matter of who spoke with the most conviction and nailed her question well. So let's begin. Venezuela was asked about converting about something she was asked about converting a shameful experience in the past to make her a stronger woman. And I love how she narrated the challenges or obstacles she faced while pursuing her dream of becoming a fashion designer. And although her English was not perfect, I still love how she made the effort to speak the language while delivering her answer, knowing that it could really cost her crown. It was... For me, it was all a, all a matter of delivering it with confidence, and I think she did it well. Of course, of course, had she probably spoken in Spanish, her answer would have been better, but I understand the need for her to impress the judges, knowing that she is competing in the U.S. soil. So at that moment, I thought she had already secured her top three spot. 
just like that. And next was Miss USA who was asked about a change she would like to see in Miss Universe. And I love how she hit it out of the ballpark when she suggested MUO to increase the age limit for the girls and related it to herself as a 20-year-old candidate competing in this year's pageant. I really feel that it will just be a matter of time before MUO implements this because as because if this is coming from because if a reigning Miss Universe is already suggesting it herself, then I don't see why this will just be a lip service from Arboni's part. And knowing how JKN, PN listens to the fans and MUO finding ways to make the pageant more inclusive at the same time, I am so confident that this will be implemented very, very soon. And next was Miss Puerto Rico who talked about how she would represent her fellow Miss Universe sisters in her reign. And she was also very powerful with her answer, especially when she, you know, when she articulated using all their voices in creating an impact to our society. Na alam yun that their voices will forever reverberate or echo in the chamber of time. Wow, that's that's those were such powerful lights and I thought she extremely did well and it was a shoe in in the top three right and then there was Miss Curacao who was asked about an issue she would like to discuss with the president of her country if she was given the opportunity but unfortunately failed to expound it for me it felt short in watching her answer, you can see that she was really trying to build up on something that introduces to the issue that she wants to raise, which is cyberbullying, but again failed to expound it in the end. I wish she could have directly answered it while, you, while using her childhood experience of being bullied, but I guess she was just so nervous and I would like to cut her some slack as she would share me as she would eventually confide in me in her ambush in the Im ambush interview that I did with her after the pageant that it was her first international pageant as a 20 year old woman implying that she was not able to control her nerves at this point so regardless you know what guys I would like to congratulate her and the entire Miss Universe Curacao organization for making it this far in the competition Curacao has been sending wonderful delegates in recent years and this is their highest placement in the past 60 years of the pageant. So congratulations again Curacao, Gabriela Dos Santos, you did your country extremely proud in this year's pageant. And lastly, we go to Dominican Republic's Andreina Martinez who was asked about the most significant challenge or obstacle the woman of her country has been facing and she also hit it off right off the bat by volunteering the need for majority of her fellow women to be given access to quality education by sharing more data about their profiles and what needed to be done and as a lawyer by profession she was Andrina was able to expound it at length with a compelling answer that give us that gives us a peek into her country's women's situation and i think she really did a great job so overall i thought all the four except for curacao could advance to the top and at this point i was so sure already that usa dominican republic and venezuela would eventually advance even if i had felt puerto rico gave a more powerful answer than venezuela just because the latter had the entire crowd growing grow going for her in the auditorium and Alam, alam naman natin, di ba? The judges always tend to get swayed by the cheers of the crowd in assessing the candidates. So even though objectively, Puerto Rico had a better answer than Venezuela, the latter built on her strong favoritism for the title at this point in time. And so, I was right when the top three got announced. At this point, my suspicion of USA's Arboni Nola winning the title has grown stronger because of how she was strategically placed in the middle, in the blocking of the line of the top three. Remind, kind of reminded me of Miriam, Miriam Kimbao's situation back in 99. Kasi she is really, literally standing out at this particular moment. So I was just waiting for her to nail her next question to seal the deal. And so the final question was, if you win Miss Universe, how would you work to demonstrate this as an empowering and progressive organization? And all three women delivered with their respective answers. Let's start with Dominican Republic. 
she made a strong case when she talked about championing women's rights as she has been doing it for quite some time in relation to her candidacy here in Miss Universe. But you know guys, you know how it feels that you can't feel any warmth or connection from her with her answer just because of how she delivered it straight up as a lawyer given her profession. Yung, her delivery was quite dry despite emphasizing every strong word that she spoke. Hence, it did not have the strong impact I would have wanted for her to generate. And next up was Miss USA, Arboni Nola, who floored everyone with her brilliant answer. My goodness, her first two sentences was were so powerful already by injecting the words transformational leader, force for good, which are the key words or taglines of this year's edition in relation to the work that she has done as a fashion designer for so long since 15 years old payata and went on to explain her answer in detail and for a moment guys i suddenly remember pia and catriona in her during their final answers in miss universe in recent years now you can feel arboni's passionate passion and that she's passionate in what she was saying to the point that it already she already went over time with her answer. And I have to admit, I got nervous for her just because she might not win because of this technicality of not finishing her answer be the, beyond the time limit. But I guess the judges did not mind this because they saw how she was passionate again. Hands on and very genuine with her answer, making her a more inspirational candidate that should be crowned up as a Miss Universe. So she, for me, she really answered with so much conviction and sincerity and showed everyone how she is an empowered and a progressive woman herself. And so she won. And now we go to Venezuela, who I feel gave the weakest answer among the three, but still acquitted herself very well in this competition. She started by saying that she started by saying the need for women... She started by saying the need for her to follow the footsteps of women who went before her. And that statement alone, in my opinion, is already a sign that she is not a leader or progressive woman in her own right, even if she latched on following the legacy of the women before her. And although she was able to inject her fashion designing background to connect with us she for me she was then she was not able to expound how she will demonstrate it in relation to the miss universe organization brand so part of me wonders now part of me wonders the outcome of what could have been had she chosen to answer her question in spanish would she have spoken more articulately and in detail and so while waiting for the crowning moment Harnas did her final walk in that beautiful black gown that paid tribute to the legendary queens of her country, Shushmita Sen and Lara Duta. So I thought that was so sweet and poignant that even though she stumbled on her walk later on, we really did not pay attention to it as I feel it made her more human and relatable to us. You see, she has been publicly ridiculed all throughout her reign due to her weight gain. So I could imagine it could really affect her self-confidence as a woman, but no, we saw in those brief moments that she had on stage, she was still able to demonstrate to us that it's not about her looks that define her reign of a winner, but the kindness and inspiration that she brings to all of us instead. And right now, as I speak to you, I miss her already. And to be honest, there was just so many brief moments I shared with her during the Miss Universe coverage that all the more makes her special to me yeah i yeah seeing her a lot backstage makes me so makes her so special to me i remember there was one time i saw her in the lobby of the hotel with her bodyguards just as i was going up to the escalator and i so immediately tried my best to go down the escalator go while going up as soon as i saw her but I couldn't anymore. So imagine, na imagine yo, yung situation. She just laughed with my fanboying moment in the elevator, in the escalator. And I thought we connected more despite the distance than probably successfully getting a photo up with her. And then there's another instance 
where there was another downtime I had in one of those days leading up to the competition. I was waiting for my Uber ride in the hotel lobby to go to a mall as I ran out of black slacks to wear for the for the events later on the next few days. And so while I was waiting for uh, for I was waiting outside the lobby, someone suddenly tapped me on my shoulder from the back and it was Esther. And I saw she was approaching Harnas who was in a pink traditional Indian attire then on the other side of the lobby waiting for their car to arrive to get to the convention center to prepare for the Muwad Crown unveiling press conference nearby. And I saw her again and she was just so beautiful to look at from afar. Now she was so serene with her demeanor then and I just love her calmness that she has been displaying in public. And it is in these moments where I really got to appreciate more of her as a human being rather than a queen who has to look perfect all the time. So going back to the crowning moment, I was very sure that USA would eventually win just because of how relatable that she is despite wearing a Vava Voom gown all throughout the night. Nah, she was just so humble and refreshing for a Miss USA candidate and this was highlighted more during her final look turn. And apart from USA, I also enjoyed Venezuela's turn even though a lot of people thought she was acting overconfident with her actuations at this point in time. For me, it was I see it more as Amanda's way of showing more of her warmth and energy of her Latino roots who are known to be festive, full of love and passion. And you can see that she was really enjoying her moment because let's face it, Yolanda Adams' rendition of Natural Woman was so engaging Nah, she was really in the moment, present in the moment. And I wouldn't probably, and I would probably do the same thing if I were in Amanda's shoes that time. Nah, she was just enjoying it, dancing while making her, while making a lot of Venezuelans so proud in the audience. So overall, congratulations to the Miss Universe organization for having an amazing top three. Honestly, any one of these three girls could have been the next Miss Universe. And so picking Arbony was really sweet because as a Filipino, it made me feel so proud to witness this moment of a fellow kababayan, although representing USA, na, doing extremely well in the competition. Na na, so, aminin ko sa inyo na wala talaga yung lungkot ko for our very own Celeste briefly kasi... May isang Pilipino naman na kahit hindi siya buong-buong Pilipino, proud na proud pa rin siya sa heritage niyang Pinoy at nakakatuwa na I know I got I also got to witness her Miss Universe journey right before my eyes. Imagine Miss Universe organization giving her to me as the last delegate for my interview a day before was kind of a sign already telling me, "Adam, Adam, this is the presumptive winner that you have, 'di ba?" And our pick to win Miss Universe too. So, oh boy, I was just so overjoyed with this and I just had a great time covering the pageant. Arboni Nola, winning in Nola is really a piece of history itself with all its Filipino connection and I got to witness this. And hindi naman pala ako jinx after all sa mga candidates natin, di ba? <laughs> oh, oh guys, kiniklaim ko na na kin o oh, oh, kiniklaim ko na siya as one of our own kasi mahal na mahal niya tayong mga Pinoy. And sana suportahan natin ang reign niya kasi napakabuti niyang tao sa lahat at nakikita ko 'yon, nakita ko 'yon first hand nung nasa New Orleans ako. Nakita ko talaga 'yon, napakabuti at napaka-genuine yung tao. So, I hope you all had a wonderful time watching this content a bit late and long. And thank you once again for giving me the limited access to all these wonderful candidates, Miss Universe Organization. Thank you for the trust and confidence. So guys, shall I do this again in El Salvador later this year?